Hey everybody, thank you so much for coming out to the show. You must be glad to get out of the damp, are you? Yeah. yeah. I need to make a few kind of, uh, give you a few weather warnings before we kick off entirely. It's kind of warm in here, isn't it? And it's not going to get any fucking cooler. There's, uh, I've noticed a thing in the show over the past two weeks that I've been here. I've been in Edinburgh two weeks. Two weeks. And I'm fucking done. I'm done with pedestrians. Fuck pedestrians. <laughs> Fuck fat Europeans having family conferences in the middle of the fucking pavement. <laughs> Fuck bus stops. Eating up half the fucking sidewalk. If you want a bus during the festival, climb on top of a building and fucking jump. <laughs> it's, uh, I've noticed that there's a natural lull in the show. This is, this is, uh, uh, it just happens. And it happens, the, the warmer it is, the more kind of pronounced it is. There's a natural lull in the show between about minute 37 and minute 54. <laughs> and I just want to assure you, when you notice that, it's not the material, it's you, okay? <laughs> uh, it's a mad planet we're living on. We're spinning at a thousand miles an hour. You think you're sitting still right now, you're not. You're spinning. And we forget this, because we use the language of the flat earth people. Sun sets, sun rises. The sun doesn't move a fucking inch. <laughs> it's us. We spin the fuck towards it, and then we spin the fuck away from it. And in a world that's so dynamically, constantly in motion, things are bound to change. Things are bound to be fucking weird. Trump, fucking. <laughs> I love Trump, I fucking love him. Donald Trump is only dangerous if you take reality seriously. <laughs> if reality is just another TV show, then the more crazy fuckers that are in it, the better. I hope he's president. I fucking hope he is. I want to see him go toe to toe with the toddler who's in charge of North Korea. <laughs> that spoiled brat with the Montessori haircut. <laughs> and, and at least you people who. I used to listen to the voices in my head. I have a. Uh, it's not easy being alive, is it? Never mind being broke. But just the general feeling of being alive is difficult. I got diagnosed recently with this thing called borderline personality <laughs> disorder. <laughs> okay. Uh, it means I'm not good on my own or with people. <laughs> um, and, you know, part, part of this job suits me. It, to have a head like that in you. Do you know, this kind of stuff, just to be talking to people and not to be thinking too hard, that fucking suits me. Uh, what doesn't suit me is the solitude. Now, we, since Ireland had money, we built all these amazing hotels. These big, huge, fucking five-star hotels, and we're only two-star people. <laughs> this, you be in the foyer of one of them and there'd be a chandelier the size of the Starship Enterprise. <laughs> and you'd be going, Vegas, am I in Vegas? <laughs> and you hook out the door, Bally Bunyan, you're in. <laughs> and the people, the people who run these hotels, they think they're doing me a favor, you know, they think they're treating me like a star, but they're actually making me feel even lonelier. The amount of nights I've spent on my own in the bridal suite. <laughs> Pulling myself asunder. <laughs> surrounded by flowers and chocolates for two. <laughs> when tears meet semen, that's not a good look. <laughs> Just below my chest, it's fucking carnage. I can hear the little impossible children of the future screaming. Chance. 
Whenever, whenever Irish people are working in these hotels, that's when the magic starts, because Irish people aren't comfortable with the level of service they're supposed to be providing. <laughs> <laughs> Nor are Irish people comfortable with the level of service they're supposed to be receiving, so no one is having any crack. <laughs> I went, down, I went down into the restaurant one morning or one of these hotels and I said to the waitress, uh, can I get the vegetarian breakfast, please? And she goes, what? Cornflakes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, OK, OK, baby, OK, OK. Cornflakes. As long as the chickens haven't been at them. <laughs> Next thing I hear this shout, oh, God, there's a chicken on the box! <laughs> We're not really going to America in the numbers that we used to, because maybe we get a sense, maybe all is not well. The United States of OK, maybe, maybe she's fucked like. But we need to acknowledge the role America played in all our lives when we were growing up. We were all half reared on American stuff. We need to say thank you before they're gone completely. Thanks. Thanks. Yanks! <laughs> Thanks for all the great stuff you've given us. The Simpsons. <laughs> you too. <laughs> all that American shit, yeah? <laughs> if you two hadn't gone to America, they'd be supporting Aslan in the Red Cow Inn and well, they fucking know it. <laughs> Some American stuff has been fantastic. Johnny Cash. Dressed in black, live in San Quentin, singing to the prisoners. I shot a man in Reno just to watch him die. Fucking murderers love that. <laughs> that's right, Johnny, that's what I did. Woo! Shot him in the face. Woo! <laughs> Kids were crying. Shot them in the face, too. Sing a song about that, Johnny. I shot some kids in Reno. Just watch them die. Well, we have our own Johnny Cash. Right here in the island. Big Tom. <laughs> a country and western legend. He's the colour of nicotine and earwax. <laughs> he does 35 songs in a row, no interval. Keep them dancing, boys. Keep them dancing. You're going out the same way you came in. Brave song to be singing to old people. <laughs> it doesn't matter who you know or where you've been. It doesn't matter who you are. Skid Row Joe or Superstar, you're going out the same way you came in. Now, <laughs> that's one of the wisest bits of country music <laughs> I've ever heard in my life. What a perfect, wonderful Irish philosophy flowing through it. A real Irish song. You'd be embarrassed listening to Ireland's call. <laughs> Have you ever heard anything like it? A horrible corporate anthem. So lumpy fuckers from the north of the island could play in the same team as lumpy fuckers from the south of the island and not be fighting about the soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> There's no personality in that. It's not even, it could be about anywhere. You might as well be singing. China, China, together standing small. <laughs> Can you imagine the fear of God we'd put into the All Blacks? The next time we're playing them in the Aviva Stadium and they're doing that, looking for their fucking car keys dance. <laughs> you the fucking said you had the fucking car keys. Well, I don't fucking have them. You can search me fucking pockets if you don't fucking believe me. One of them cunts has the fucking car keys. <laughs> You're always fucking hassling me about the fucking car keys. I don't even drive a fucking car. Why would I have the fucking keys? 
Well, imagine if when they were finished, the Irish team just linked arms and started singing, I'm going out the same way you came in. <laughs> it doesn't matter who you know or where you've been, dangling the car keys in front of them. We are a country full of lunatics. 